That, that's when you do the serious development. And it's an iterative process. As I said, the, um, the target, the Drupal site, is going to be evolving from, out from under you. And meanwhile, you're also discovering more things that may, need to be accounted for. So um, this is a cyclical process. You're going to iterate. You're going to run your test migration. And you're going to find you're going to need to go to tweak it and go back again. And once it's all done, you launch. So the, the analysis stage. Usually the, um, your new site, the design of that site is um, done from the top down. It's people, um, your, your designers have looked at the old site and sort of imagined what it'll look like in Drupal and they've taken the visual elements, what they can see on the existing site and designed um, the Drupal site to accommodate those. Uh, but there's a lot to a website that isn't directly visible. Uh, so it's important as a migrator, you're going to be getting very intimate with that legacy data. You need to dig down into it. You've got to find those pieces that no one else has thought of. And you need to surface them and communicate them to the rest of the team. And I just said that pretty much. And I pretty much said that too. Getting ahead of myself. So it's really critical. You have to be very thorough, very methodical when you're analyzing the data. You need to look through the source data table by table, row by row. Um, make sure you're accounting for everything you find. And you're going to find a lot of interesting things. It's amazing how often uh, we found that the whatever system we're coming from at some point in the past had been migrated from something even older and there's always little bits and pieces from that ancient first generation system still lurking around you, know, you, you need to watch out for those you'll see things like uh, some odd markup in your older data that you're going to need to massage to make it look nice and drupal while you're going through this, you're going to be acting like a three-year-old. You're going to say, why? Why? But why? <laughs> it's, um, there are a lot of WTFs in the legacy data, always. So um, once you've done some, your initial analysis, um, it, as early in the project as possible, you want to start implementing uh, your basic migrations. And with the migrate module, it's actually very easy. Um, you can very quickly do uh, initial analysis, um, an, an initial implementation that will get, you know, for users, just their usernames and email addresses for nodes. You can very quickly put together something, at least get the titles and bodies, uh, start getting something concrete people can look at and know that you've been doing something. And um, based on your analysis, you can uh, actually fill in a fair amount of things uh, right from the beginning. Some things are fairly obvious. It's usually very obvious where the title of your articles come from. Um, there are other things that you don't really have to think too hard about. There's a status column. If 98% of the values in the status column are two, that probably means published. Um, there are things that are a little less clear, and then there are the things, your uh, WTHs or Fs as you prefer. And um, this is where I talk a little about the migrate module. Um, in a, in, a, in a normal development process, you, you are going to be explaining what you're doing in your um, mappings in the code in code comments. But no one sees that except the developers. What the migrate module lets you do is it put the comments actually in the mappings. And the mappings are displayed through the um, migrate module's UI so you can share what you've learned and also what questions you have. They, they get annotated there and they can also be exported, which we'll uh, see in a moment. So 
So once we've got uh, your basic implementation done in the migrate module, um, the next step are the meetings. And I, I have to tell you, my name is Mike. I am a geek. I am never happier than when I have my nose buried in my monitor coding away. I don't want to take time from that for meetings. So believe me, you, you, you must believe me when I tell you you need to do these meetings. You need to sit down with everyone. You need to sit down, you need the, whatever the technical resource, whoever it is on the client side who understands the old data. You, you need the stakeholders to tell you what's important and what's not. And you need the site builders because you're going to be finding new work for them. You need, all these people need to uh, get together, uh, whether it's teleconference or in the same room, and review this, the data methodically and um, tediously. Uh, and, and this is really critical. Um, you, you can't skip this step much as you may think you understand the data from just looking at the tables. No, you're going to learn more things from these, um, from these meetings. So um, the Migrate module, as I said, you can um, build out your mappings of your data in the module and you can export them. And uh, what we do is we export this and uh, pull it into a Google spreadsheet these mapping meetings, we pull up the spreadsheet. Everyone's looking at the spreadsheet. And we can see, uh, going down the left side, um, the migrate module, uh, one, one nice feature, if I do say so myself, it automatically detects all, everything that's available on the Drupal side, all the fields that are available to be filled in. And also, um, as a result of our analysis, we've listed all the source fields that are available to you. And you see those in the middle columns. And you can see where you get the two lined up there. We've already mapped those fields. It was not that hard to figure out that the forum name in Jive should become in Drupal the uh, title of the forum node. Um, the default column, uh, some, some uh, values can be hard-coded when you're migrating. Uh, in this case, uh, we want all our forum nodes to be owned by the administrative account. That is account number one. You see that in the default column. And finally, as I said, um, when you can comment on these mappings within the mapping itself, and we've exported that, that's the description. So in this scenario here, um, we've got these four fields at the top we've looked at, and we have no idea what they are. So we have done two things with them. We've added the description to asking the question, what, what is this? Do we need it? And uh, you may notice in the uh, first column, we've got uh, sections. We've grouped these under client, done, and DNM. Each mapping we assign to what we call an issue group. And by convention, um, we usually have five or so uh, issue groups. Uh, working from the bottom up, DNM means do not migrate. These are things we know we don't need to deal with. We are always happy to put things in that group. Uh, above that, done, those are the things we're confident about. We know what we're doing, and we've implemented it. We've got the names going into the titles. That's beautiful. Uh, the other issue groups uh, represent our, the different people involved in the uh, project. And basically, we're assigning these fields to those people. Right here, we've, the, the, uh, the next step to be taken with these four fields is for the client to tell us what they are and what to do with them. And a very typical workflow here is that these, will, um, these fields will migrate through different issue groups. Uh, if the client at the mapping meeting tells us that this um, uh, forum index counter field is something they really, really need, then the next thing we do is change the issue group for, for that field to the site builders. The site builders are going to need to add a field to the Drupal node to hold that. 
once they've added that field, the issue group becomes the migrators. It's now our job to implement the mapping. And once that's done, we move it to, to done, and we are happy. So once we've got through um, this process, we've identified all our mappings, um, we implement them. And no matter how good you feel coming out of the mapping means, you feel like you've addressed everything, you've figured everything out, more things are going to come up. The, the, again, the Drupal um, destination site is going to keep evolving. And even though you think you've found every table in row, you know, there, there's going to turn out to be some odd little out of band thing. Oh, we have these XML files off the side we forgot about. Or we might, in, um, once we dive deeper in and start doing full migrations, we might find that the, uh, the bodies of the articles have some sort of custom tags in them, and we have to figure out what to do with them. So um, we iterate, we, we implement, we test, and we refine. And a critical thing, and this is, again, something you want to get uh, set up as early in, in the project as possible. You set up a staging server. You set up a server that's going to, every night, pull in the latest code from your repository, um, build a site, a Drupal site from scratch using Drush Make or Drush Site Install, uh, whatever it is, and run the full migration. And this site should be ideally visible to everyone who's involved with the project. So they can see, uh, well, it's good for you as migrators that they see you're making progress. And, and it's also good because there's, they're going to see things they don't like. The first time that staging server comes up, you think you've got everything. After the mapping meetings, you've debugged your, your mappings, everything looks great. And the first time one of the stakeholders looks at it and he says, where are the related articles? And you say, what related articles? And this, is, this always happens. There, there's always these disconnects, the, these things that were left on the table. Uh, the customer just took for granted that this was part of the article, so of course you knew it was there and you had to bring it across. You didn't know about that. This is something you don't want to find out the week before launch. So you get that staging server and get people looking at it as early in the development process as you can. Um, oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to point out about this stage, which is the longest stage of the project, uh, the, the main development phase, is that uh, there's kind of a long tail of uh, development effort on the migration. Uh, your, migrators, uh, your migrators are going to be very, very busy immediately after the mapping tables, but uh, mapping meetings, but as things, uh, as the site build stabilizes and as you work out all your problems, um, migrators are going to have less and less to do until you get close to launch. And so when you're resourcing these projects, um, that's something to keep in mind that whoever you have um, doing the migrations, they might be fully, fully utilized at first, but you know, somewhere in the middle, they're going to be half utilized. They're they're only going to or they're going to going to need to put in, you know, ten hours a week on the migration. So after all of that, we're ready for the launch. And um, typically, uh, what you want to do is uh, you get your site, your eventual production site, um, established. Um, get your code deployed there. And uh, usually, if you have a large volume of data, if you have a million nodes or uh, something like that, you want to do an initial migration of that data um, a day or two before your launch, get it in there. You, you don't want to be um, waiting eight hours for your migration to run on launch day. Um, it's a subject for a more technical talk, but uh, if the if you can at all you can um, you want to establish your migration so that they 
uh, use high watermarks, that is um, some sort of flag that tells you when content is updated or inserted so that you can run a, the last migration you run on top of this one uh, can very quickly find what's changed and even if your full migration is something that's an eight hour job, your final migration, your delta of whatever changed last day or two hopefully is a 20 minute job or at least less than an hour. Um, so at the designated time and hopefully you're communicating to your site users, your customers, um, that you're going to be making this transition and that there'll be a little um, time when you're, you're not accepting new content, no comments and so on. So the designated time you set the old site read only. You run that delta migration, pull in the last couple days worth of content. One quick look to make sure that that last bit of content did make it across. And you switch over the DNS or your load balancers, uh, whatever it takes to bring your Drupal site live. <laughs> We're done. The, the best part. So uh, just a quick review that uh, some of the main elements of su success in a uh, data migration project. Um, get started on the migration as early as you can. Um, start analyzing as early as you can. Get to the mapping meetings as quickly as you can. Get that staging server up as quickly as you can. And, and each of these pieces, um, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, it, it, the, the faster you can get people looking at your site, looking at the results of the migration, the better. You can always refine it later. Um, again, referring to the migrate module, the migrate module makes it very easy to uh, import and roll back and import again. So it uh, supports the iterative development. Uh, and communication all along the way is very important. Um, you, you, as migrators, you need the, um, those technical resources to be responsive when you have questions about the legacy data. Um, you also would like the um, site builders to be proactive in telling you when they're going to add more fields that you need to migrate into. And uh, you need to also keep everyone else informed uh, when you're discovering the new little tweaks and strange little things you find in the legacy data. Now I'm uh, going to back up a little um, to before the beginning of, of all of this. A uh, common question that we get is how do you estimate a migration project? How do you uh, figure out how long it's going to take beforehand? Um, typically people's first uh, thought when they come to us and ask uh, want to know how long the process is going to take, they're going to say, well, we got a million articles, we got 100,000 users, how long will it take to migrate them? I don't know. <laughs> uh, if you think about it a little more, what, what is going to be harder to migrate? A million articles just like each other with a, a three simple fields on them or five different content types with anywhere from five to 20 fields on each. You got recipes. I've run into recipe migrations a couple of times. Those are, those are lots of fun because they have complex internal structure. What, what matters uh, in terms of um, the difficulty of migration isn't the volume of the data. The, the, the main thing that impacts is the launch, how long it takes to run that big migration before the launch but it does really has very little effect on the development time, which is the, the key point. The key point is the complexity of the migration. It's how many different things you're migrating and how complex each of those things are. Uh, we do have sort of a very simple formula, uh, sort of an, it, it's a little bit arbitrary, but at least helps us get a, a ballpark in, when that's made. And basically, that the most fundamental part is aspect is the number of migrations. And one migration in this context 
is basically one combination of a source thing and a destination thing. An article on your legacy site to your new Drupal article content type. Users to users, um, categories to vocabularies, and so forth. And uh, sort of arbitrarily, we, we decide that uh, each field is about, each individual field is about a fifth the, of the um, effort of the whole migration. Developing the migration itself, you're developing, figuring out what the query is to get the source data, and there, there's a certain amount of overhead there. Fields, uh, most of them are very simple, straightforward mappings, but the ones that are not will end up sucking a lot of your time, like those recipes. And so that, that, that's sort of um, the first draft formula. Second draft formula, uh, I don't show the full one here, but some migrations are easier than others. Uh, taxonomy is pretty easy. Files can be a lot trickier. So you can, you sort of weight those. And um, as I said, there, there's a magic factor and uh, that's the secret sauce uh, and that really depends a lot on um, the experience of the people who are doing the migration and uh, sort of other factors like whether you're migrating directly from a database, which is generally the easiest thing to do, or some XML feed, and if it is an XML feed, um, how complex that feed is, um, or if you're coming from CSV files or some other source. So, um, it's just about it. Uh, I just want to add one little note at the last uh, moment for the uh, more technically inclined here. This is actually a question that came up uh, during after Druish's talk. Um, there's some talk of putting the basic migrate API into uh, core Drupal for Drupal 8, and we're going to have a BOF session tomorrow at 1 o'clock, room 210, to talk about that. So, any questions? Uh, uh, feel free to line up at the mic so everyone can hear uh, what you're asking. Um, so it, uh, I understood uh, a, a lot of your discussion was mapping uh, content fields, for instance, uh, from a database, the old style, you know, content management system to Drupal's. But what are some of the issues if you're dealing with files that um, maybe don't have references to them in the old database. I, I know you, you alluded to the file issue taking more time. Could you amplify a little bit? Uh, well, um, what, what kind of files? Uh, you say they're not referenced from the database. Are they referenced perhaps from the content itself, you mean? Yeah. Like yeah. hrefs? Um, well, that's one of the things sometimes um, if the, um, you're, you're pulling article bodies and the article bodies contain uh, image tags that refer to images, you've got no other way to pull them. You know, that's one of the things that makes it more complex because then you have to develop code that's going to parse the bodies and find those references and pull them in. Um, Files, files are challenging in a lot of ways. Um, they can come from a lot of different places. You, know, you might be scraping them off websites. Uh, they might be blobs in databases. Uh, you might be able to, uh, this is often the easiest thing, you might be able to uh, mount, just copy the files to a file system that you can mount and directly either copy or even link directly into your uh, Drupal system. And um, I, I, Druish alluded to it, and I'll admit it up here, the uh, handling for files is the weakest part of the migrate module. And it's actually the, the main theme for the next version of the migrate module is trying to make that easier. And just one more thing about um, file sources. Um, migrate has terrific support for migrating from XML files. So if you happen to have you know huge XML files and directories of XML files, uh, Migrate is uh, quite suited to move all of that data into Drupal. 
Yeah, so uh, the question was, what about HTML files? Um, so really well-formed HTML files can be read in and the data can be parsed. Messy HTML files, um, simple XML won't do the job, so you need to look at other tools. One of them is QueryPath. Um, another one of them is like Beautiful Soup and Python. Um, you can find tools that will open up HTML files and get the relevant bits of data that you need there. Hi, um, just a couple of kind of resource planning questions. Um, what's the minimum skill set to do a, a very simple kind of migrate? And what's the kind of maximum worst case skill set for a very complex one? Well, the, uh, the baseline, um, migrate module is a um, very much a developer's tool. Uh, the, the baseline is experience with Drupal, the Drupal API, you know, comfort with calling things like node save, uh, PHP, of course, and more particularly um, familiarity with the um, PHP's object-oriented support. The migrate module is an object-oriented framework, so you have to be very comfortable with classes, you know, what an abstract class is, and static functions, and so forth. Okay, um, and this is probably the wrong session. I, I thought this was going to be the technical session, and that's my mistake. But just in terms of debugging a migrate when you're a developer and you're in the middle of it and it's, something's not going well, what kind of tools are available to you? Um, well, I, I hate to admit, but um, I use a lot of Drush print statements. Okay. <laughs> and, and there, there are key points, um, like prepare row, prepare complete. I throw in some Drush prints to see how the data is being transformed as it goes, goes through. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so just to elaborate on that, um, the migrate module keeps track of every error that occurred during the migration. If it wasn't able to save a particular node, um, you will see that in the error table for that migration. So you want to review that and do some correction in your code to cope with those problems. Um, standard PHP debugging um, is still there, so uh, things like um, xdebug and firing up your debugger are really helpful for migrate module debugging. And uh, xhprof for uh, performance. Um, you were talking about uh, having a migration team and a site building team. Uh, what if your company is small or you're a freelancer and you have small resources? What suggestions do you have on getting all that work done? Um, if you have a small team, you have to be creative. Um, I, a, as I said, it, the, uh, the migration uh, resource is um, someone who's going to ramp down after the early part of the um, development so they can um, you know be be freed up to participate in QA uh, UAT or or maybe your uh, site builder and your migrator are the same person can I just add to that I, I might suggest as well that if you have limited resources focus on choosing someone in your internal staff that really understands the legacy data and try to outsource the actual migration to someone else. Um, but the, the real inside knowledge of what your source data did, how it used to behave, uh, that's something you can't really outsource. That's something that someone with real deep institutional knowledge has, and that person's gonna be very deeply involved on that. Um, I know this is supposed to be for questions, but I've, I've been buried in Migrate for the last couple of years, and there were yeah. some points in your presentation that I maybe want to share some of my experiences because I think they might be useful and I hope that's okay. Uh, I just want to point out this is uh, Christopher Widom from uh, Martha Stewart and uh, he was, he actually made some, many of the same points I made here in their presentation yesterday. Um, and w one of the things that, that uh, we learned, we were talking about being a code geek and, and really loving being in the code and so forth and then we're talking about finding people who are going to be doing this work of mapping and assign, you know, doing the analysis of the source data. And um, one of the things that I've found over the years of working with, with data, I, I'm very much a data geek. And, and when you're dealing with developers, I think that there are code geeks and there are data geeks. And they're very different kinds of people. And so when you're thinking about which resources in your company that you're going to assign these tasks to, um, some people really get what data is about and they get excited about data. 
people who don't have that inclination are not going to um, discover the issues as quickly and are going to like generally this is you know uh, um, not perform as well. It's not because they're not smart enough. It's not because they're not trying hard enough. They just don't have that mindset. So you know, finding people who get jazzed about going through a spreadsheet with 180,000 lines in it and figuring out where the discontinuities are, there are people like that, believe it or not. And those are the people in your organization that you want to put on this project. Um, putting people who could care less, uh, they're not going to perform. Uh, that's been my experience. There's no, there's no motivation that I can give them. It's just, it's in their nature to, like, they open that spreadsheet and they just want to go to sleep. Um, that's one thing I wanted to say. The other thing I've also noticed, I think these are just human factors that I, that I want to contribute from my own uh, dealing with this. You know, when you raise the beer glass and the celebrate part, my experience with it is, um, instead of the beer glass, panic. Um, no matter how hard I've tried to get people to QA the staging site, um, most product owners don't really, really take it seriously until it's live. And um, that's, again, I think that's human nature. I can go in there and I can in meeting after meeting after meeting say, look at the staging site, look at the staging site, have you checked everything out? And they say, yeah, it looks great. Well, what they've done is they've browsed the five top channel pages, they've gone through some of their favorite articles, all the stuff that's being promoted, which is usually your highest quality data. But then somebody starts searching, and an old video from 2002 shows up, and it's all messed up. Um, so that's another thing. Like In terms of that long tail that you're describing, you're absolutely right. The development resources will diminish towards launch, but you might be ready for the fact that after launch, suddenly your migration team is going to be working 12 hours a day for the next three days. Um, so that's all I want to share. All right, thanks. That's a good insight about the uh, data geeks. Um, I have to admit, as someone who is very proud of constructing a clever SQL group by, I, I am a data geek. And, and on, the latter, um, on the latter point, um, it, it, it's really important to have good project management. Uh, someone who is going to be, who is going to get all those people into those mapping meetings, someone who is going to get those stakeholders to look at the staging server. You, you mentioned quality assurance. Seems to be two critical places that uh, you have to be sure you're right. One, when you finish your model, you have any guidance on how you know that that model that you really did understand the source and that model is correct. Oops. Yeah, I'll take a shot at that one. Um, Mike showed that the migrate module um, actually exposes each individual mapping for each of the migrations. And part of the mapping meetings, you know, the second half of those meetings is about looking at those um, web pages for each migration. And, you know, you can actually go through the trouble of getting sign off from product owners, say, yes, all these mappings look correct to me. Um, that's definitely, I agree, it's a critical QA point. I think the migrate module helps with that part of the process a lot. The second one, if I'm older, but test an evaluation of the final product. You, you mentioned the, the million uh, nodes. How many of those do you look at to know that it all ran well? Do you have any idea? Do you look at 10? Do you look at 1,000? Um, what you try to do is identify a diversity of nodes to look at. You don't just look at the 10 most recent articles, which are probably going to be the cleanest ones. You, you try to, in your analysis, you try to identify the outliers. You find the ones that have you know, no categories versus the ones that have 10 categories on them. Look at samples of those. Uh, look at the ones that have no markup in them versus ones that have a lot of links and other fancy stuff. Uh, there's no way you can look at everything, but you can feel fairly confident if you have got a good diversity of samples to look at that you're on the right track. Um, I'm curious to know more about uh, the high water mark that you mentioned when you're trying to determine uh, when you, know, you make the initial dump that might take eight hours to migrate and then you want to do a delta dump when it's in the read-only phase. 
Um, I, we haven't done any, at my company, we haven't done anything big enough where we've had to do it in separate stages like that, but it's bound mm -hmm. to happen. So I'm curious how you manage that, some more detail about that, uh, that Delta idea, that high watermark idea. Sure. Um, well, you're right. The ideal scenario is if the legacy data, um, every item has an updated timestamp on it. And every time when it's created, that is set to the creation date. And every time that is changed, that timestamp is updated. And then the uh, migrate module, when, when you implement your migration, what you do is sort your source data by that field, by your updated field, and you query on only items whose updated timestamp is greater than the last one you recorded. Every time you run the migration, you record the highest one. So that is a very efficient way, if it's available to you, <laughs> to identify your created versus updated. If you don't have that, then it can be a challenge. Either you have to, um, well, a, a lot of times you just, um, it, but you can always identify new data because the migrate module maintains a map of what it's already migrated. And sometimes you just end up uh, letting updates go and only pulling in new things that have changed. Um, the alternative is to do um, like a, f a full update just to make sure you've got all the latest data. Um, it, it's so much easier if you have that updated timestamp, though. Or, or some other means, uh, another actually, um, actually I believe we did this with Martha Stewart, um, is if there's a transaction log of some sort in the old system. Uh, we, we had this for some of the content with Martha Stewart. So we had sort of a um, special migration process that would read through the transaction log, look for updates, and, and for that matter, for deletes, and then uh, mark content for update or for delete. And that, that well, while not quite as clean as the high water mark, it's still a lot more efficient than doing a full reimport. Okay, uh, is that about it? I want to just uh, make a little pitch here that uh, Acquia provides professional services around data migration. Um, encourage you guys to do them yourselves and in your own organizations. If you think you need help, please come talk to us, Mike or I, or you know, fill out the um, sales forms at Acquia and we'd be happy to help you guys. All right, well, thanks for coming. Thank you. Please complete the survey on the DrupalCon site and uh, let us know what you thought of the session. Thanks.